All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay, answering the question. First question is the depth of the problem driving the depth problem. So here we go. Uh, who's, let's see here. Uh, I'll wait till people get hop in more. All right. So you like my little clipboard? It's attached to the. Uh, I'm hanging it from an IKEA thing. All right. Deriving the apparent death, Mrs. Loves is over there. So, all right. Uh, that's my talking clock. So, when your eye is up here, the light comes up. Let's see if I can do this a little bit more. I'm going to close the shade here for a second. Okay. Yeah, it's better. So when the light comes up and it bends out, it goes that way, then these follow these back. And they look like they're coming from there. So you end up with a virtual image that's here where this is your apparent depth as opposed to your actual depth. So what does that mean? Let's derive that out. We're going to zoom in to this piece right here. Here's theta one, here's theta two. So let's figure this out. All right. Da, 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 da. The trick is, is that this distance, this width stays the same. So we really end up with, let me bring this all the way down. I have two triangles here. Uh, now, my in-laws have decided to start texting me. All right, here we go, just. Uh, so, I have D, which is this triangle, and then I have D prime, which is this triangle is when this comes up and this comes off this way this distance x stays the same so when we go to look at it it's going to go so i have two triangles i have a triangle that looks like this which is x d prime theta two because remember is it this oh no it's this one ah ah D, and this is theta one. That's not theta two. This one is theta two. Because this angle, this angle, and this angle are the same, which means this angle and this angle are the same because of the way that's set up. This one's theta two. All right, so what do I have? The tangent of theta, and this is x. So the tangent of theta one is opposite over adjacent. The tangent of theta two is tangent of theta two is opposite over adjacent. I'm gonna solve these both for x, set them to each, to each other. So x equals d over tan theta one 
and x equals d prime tan theta 2. Let me double check that. x, x, that. Yep. La -da -da. There we go. Set those two equal to each other. Uh, d tan theta 1 equals d prime tan theta 2. We can almost read it. All right, so let's solve for d prime. Uh, let's go up this way. d prime equals... D over tan theta one, tan theta one, tan theta two. All right, now you have to use a small angle approximation where, all right, if theta is much, much smaller, right, then what is it, 10 degrees? Theta equals sine theta. Well, I'm sorry. There you go, math people. Um, equals sine equals tan. So now I can plug that into here, and I end up with d sine theta 1 sine theta 2. And I know n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta two. <coughs> so sine theta two equals N one over N two. This is not going the way that I thought it was. Uh-oh. Plug that into, I end up with sine squared somewhere. Now I'll plug it in and see what happens. Uh, what is x supposed to be? So Shreya, x is the distance. This is how wide. Uh, x is this location here, which is kind of that. The idea is when you're looking down into it, it doesn't change its distance this way. Um, so when you're looking sideways, the, the object is still the same distance from where it comes in to where this distance doesn't look, this distance looks the same, this distance doesn't. Does that kind of make sense? Um, so when you are, like if somebody's over here looking at the chair, looking at the, right? So then they would see the chest. Uh, that's more, so this is getting way there. So that would be, they see the chest here, which is a which is still farther up, but the same distance. It's the same vertical position, but not the same depth. It's not the same. This doesn't change. This changes. Yeah, another one could be the width of it. The width of the object would count as well. That would be um, that would be okay. However, I dork myself into a corner. So because this did not end up where I wanted it to be. So if I replace that with sine theta two, I end up with d. Sine theta one and one over n two sine theta one sine theta one. Uh, with, so then d prime equals n two over n one d all divided by one over sine squared theta one. And I have a feeling I get to hand wave that away. 
sine squared. If theta is small, no, that puts me down here. I don't get to make it go away. Why didn't that work? Turns out it's one of the homework problems. It's number 23 in your book at the end of the chapter. Um, what did I do wrong? All right. Well, that's good. Only half the class saw it. The, uh, what next? Why didn't that work? I'm missing something here. This is, oh, it's this angle. That's, oh, that's right, because that's not, that's not theta one. That's theta one, which makes that theta one, which makes that theta one, which makes x over d. There we go. Yes, 23 in the textbook. Uh, my, there we go. I had this flipped upside down. That makes me feel much better. Okay, so d prime tan theta two equals d tan theta one. So d prime is d tan theta one over d over tan theta two, and then sine theta one over sine theta two equals n two over n one d prime equals d n two over n one. Yes. All right. That makes me feel better. Trey, does that answer your question? Uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, Shreya's next question was about looking at how do you know the thickness of the converging lens when you draw it out. Uh, you get to, because we're doing the thin lens equation, you get to ignore the thickness of the lens. Um, yeah, I will read. I'll read to write that in a little bit. But yeah, you, when you're doing the lens, uh, th doing thin lenses, so you have... I really just have a whole bunch of these in my garage waiting for this moment just as this. So when you have a lens and you're drawing it out, and we've had our, here's our object. Here's our center of the lens. Um, when this comes across, it actually bends here, bends through there, and then right, bends through there as well. And then, what is it? so that's the uh, Uzalak, I think, parallel rays go through the focus or whatever. However, because we're doing a thin lens. We made it! Yay. Nice. My kids just made it home. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> the thin lens. We ignore this and make all of the refraction happen at the dotted line at the center of the lens. So all refraction happens in the center. That's what it means to be a thin lens. When you have a thick lens, then you can't. Then you can't. You have to figure out where it goes through and it goes all the around. Um, the, the idea of the Uzalak and the Geyer and the Crispillo, those are all the same things, except now you're happening on the right side as opposed to the left side. 
Can I draw the ray drawing a little bit bigger? Yes. All right, here we go. There we go. I got that. Um, let me put the lens on there. All right, we got that. So let's put our little arrow over here. Uh, it did open school today and tomorrow for teachers, so I can go back into my class. The um, I will have a whiteboard later this week. Uh, Urjo, uh, Shreyas, do we need only to know thin lenses for the AP exam? Yes. Uh, thick lenses are for college level stuff. So the idea is that all the refraction is going to happen right here. So if this is my focus, and here's my, there's my focus. Draw the lines as it, draw the rays as if they, they refract at the center of the lens. When in actuality, they will refract a little bit here and then refract out like that. The average turns out to be the same. Uh, but you still have to treat it like a thin lens. Next. What else do we got? Do, 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 do. Uh, we'll come back. Let's do... Whoops. Wish I knew how to change this more. Oh. So the next question I come up with multiple um, multiple where are you? Uh, multiple layers. Uh, these aren't thin films. These are just regular films. Um, Yes, Brandon, we can do multiple lenses here in a moment. I think, well, multiple lenses, I do multiple lenses on, I have a video of that one already on there. So if you want to check that out, Brandon. Um, I'm going to close this. Where is it? Um, drawing three layers above the interface between layers of parallel. So three layers of three different materials, air above and below. So we have, oh, I got to put another layer in there. So I have A, B, and C, and then there's air above and below. Um, where do you see it? This is like your windows, actually. So if you have glass, some sort of xenon, glass again, and then air, where you could have air on both sides. Um, what else? Where else could you actually see this? So the question is, indirect refraction is in the drawing. So we have n equals 1.4, n equals 1.5, and then n equals 1.3. Uh, in the drawing, identical rays are sent into the layers. So I have one, uh, and the light zigzags through each layer, reflecting from the top and the bottom surfaces, the index rays. For each layer, the ray of light has an angle of incidence of 84 degrees. All right, so I've got one coming in here, I've got one coming in here, and I've got one coming in here. So, uh, so this is problem number 10 on your web assign, which is, if you want to look at it in your book, it's chapter 26, number 30. For the cases in which the total turn, okay, angle is for the, which total turn is possible for me to the top of the uh, Determined by amount which the angle of incidence exceeds the critical angle. Oh.
for the cases in which the total internal reflection. Oh, so I need to bounce around inside of there. I need this to go think, 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 think. For the cases in which it zigzags through each layer, reflecting from the top and bottom surfaces. This has got to go this way, and then it's got to reflect and go this way and reflect and go that way. Right? So I need the light to bounce through each one of those. All right. So now, what is. All right. So when you are finding a critical angle, critic, critical, critical, critical angle, there's C. Uh, So, so I'm bouncing around inside there. So I need to figure out what the critical angle is for each one of these. So when I bounce A off the air, so it's, I'm starting with that angle there. So at least it has to bounce off of there. And I know that if I'm going from, all right. So that layer A, the top surface, uh, B, the bottom surface oh yeah so they go here 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 so this is actually turning into quite the mess nice um oh and there's zero if the total reflection is not possible so going from let's start with a because i think the first question is a Layer A at the top surface, I'm going from a high index material to a low index material, which means that it's possible. So now the critical angle is when N1 sine theta one equals N2 sine theta two. I need the critical angle is theta one such that theta two equals 90 degrees. So that goes to one. So theta C is the inverse sine of N2 over N1. So I need to solve for the critical angle there. So I'll call this theta A top. So theta A top is the inverse sine of N2, which is air all over N3, which is one, N2, which is 1.3. Yes, that has an angle. And so if all of my thetas are, well, so this is Kunal's, uh, 84.8. I solve for that. So all of these are questions are, what's the delta theta, where it's the theta critical minus the 84.8 degree answer. So here's my, plug that in there. This has an answer. Uh, what about down here? This angle becomes this angle. And now I need to figure out this angle. And there's gonna be a little bit of trig involved in doing that one. So uh, let's see if we can figure this out. This is my calculator. Uh, inverse sine of one divided by 1.3, 50.2, 50.2 minus 84.8, 34.5, actually this number should be on that side and that one should be on that side, because I have to subtract it from 84, if it's greater than 84 then um, I didn't, I'm not beyond the critical angle. The angle of incidence is, is the angle of incidence the smallest possible angle? Are you talking about the, the angle of incidence is the angle of that ray measured to the pair, measured to the perpendicular line. And so the critical angle is the critical angle such that the angle of incidence is equal to, uh, making the refracted ray parallel to the top surface. 
there were the the refracted ray is 90 degrees. So that's 35 degrees there. Now it's going to all bounce and go here. So if that means this one is 35, which means this one is 35 degrees. So now I need to see whether I have total internal reflection happening here. I'm going from low index into high index material. There's no total internal reflection possible. So it, it's not working. And then now you do the same thing for B. So B is a high index going into a low index material. So now I can figure it out. I do the same thing. This is the critical angle here is the inverse sine of 2 into 1, 1 1.3 over 1.5. And then that's going to give me this angle. That angle is also this angle. And that's 1.4 1 .1 over 1.5. And now you can work yourself through. And I should get values for both of those because I'm going from high index to low index. So the last question, the last part is I'm going from a low index material into a high index material. There is no critical angle, so that one's zero. And then I do have to, this is 84.8. Some of that gets reflected. 100% of it doesn't get reflected, but some of it does. So that's 84.8. That becomes 84.8 here. Uh, I'm going from a high index material into a low index material. I have the option of, um, Totally internal reflecting. And then we go from there. All right. I know they had to see everything. They're like tourists. Next. Two. Oh, there's Mrs. Lumps. Yes. Good job, guys. Go wash your hands. Uh, this is similar to Ashley's problem where she has the light coming up. She's actually trying to figure out what the... Um, critical angle is. So when we do, there's your surface, here's your treasure chest, toilet paper. Um, you want that to go up that way. And then I want this. So here's your, that's your theta one, and then here's your theta two, but I want theta two to be 90 degrees in that question. So the um, just skims above the surface of the liquid, yeah, that means you're, means that's 90 degrees, which means you're really solving for the critical angle down there. So how are we doing? All right. Uh, yeah, da, 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 da. And let's see, I think I got Brandon. Let's do one more here. I think I covered uh, for critical angles is theta 2 90 degrees or theta 1? Theta 2. Theta 2 is uh, you set for 90, for 90 degrees because I'm trying to get this to just move along here. And oh, well, there was one more. I think Shreya had one more question. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. All right, one more, and then we'll get to the multiple lenses, and then uh, we'll figure out. So then I've got a question where here's your slab. Here's your slab. And then light's coming in. And then it's going to refract. 
diffract and hit some point P. Slab is surrounded by air. What's the maximum value? So this is 26 degrees. Rear light travels to point P. The slab is surrounded by a fluid. What's the maximum value of N so that I get total internal reflection at point P? So in order for total internal reflection to need to ha happen here, you need to go from high index to low index. This is quartz with an N of, it has 1.544. This is air. So that's one point. So yes, I have that ability to totally internally reflect. Then uh, I need to now um, what's my, what? What's the maximum value of N? Oh, this is not air. This is some fluid. That's gross. Um, so I. Total control. So I need to figure out what the critical angle here is going to be. N quartz sine. We'll call that theta. We'll call that theta one, and then that's got to equal N to sine theta two. But that's one. So the inverse sine. So theta one, this but this one right here, has got to be n. Oh, sorry, the inverse sine of one two two's on top, n of the fluid, and and a quartz. All right, this has to. I'm solving for n here. So I'm going to solve that around sine theta 1 and quartz is going to equal the maximum of my fluid such that this is there. I know what the end of the quartz is. It's 1.544. And now I need to switch markers. Oh, i got to figure out what that angle is. So if this is 26, I have this. This is going to be like that. Do I know how long it is? Yeah. Oh, it enters. Instant angle enters the course, travels point B. So it's not so what's the minimum value of N? So it's what it points B. Oh, it doesn't really matter if this is because this angle is set. This has to be 90 degrees. So now I have a triangle that looks like this. This is my theta one. This has to be my theta refracted. And then because that's this drawing here. And then theta one. Is, this is 26 degrees. Theta 1 is going to be 90 minus theta refracted. My refracted angle is going to be from over here. So N of fluid. That's where I'm coming out of the fluid into there. Sine 26 degrees is going to equal N of the quartz sine theta r okay I'm doing okay there so this turns into n fluid sine 26 minus n I'm sorry Equal or divide this by the n quartz equals sine theta r, the inverse sine of n fluid over n quartz, sine 26 degrees equals theta r. I think I can plug that into there. So now theta 1 
can you still see that? Yes, you can. Theta 1 equals 90 minus the inverse sine of nf over nq sine 26. Plug this into there. Come on, pull, pull over. So, n of the quartz, the sine of theta 1, which is 90 minus the inverse sine of nf over nq sine 26 is equal and F. All right, so uh, NQ shoot, sine of 90 minus theta is sine of 90 minus theta is the sine of theta? Does that sound right? Sine of 90 minus theta equals theta. Why does that sound right to me? Is anybody still there? Oh, good. Is the sine of 90 minus theta, theta, the sine of theta? Thank you. Oh, sine of not. Thank you, Maya. Is the cosine of theta? Let's plug that in. So this turns into the. Crap, that's not what I wanted. Because then that gives me the cosine of the inverse sine of NF over NQ sine 26. And that's going to give me NF. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But I know that. I thought I could make that sign go away. Crap. Gone for a couple days and now I can't get anything done. All right. Let me come back to that. Okay. I'm going to work on this one a little bit. I'm also going to work on... Um, sorry, time is up. Okay, a lot for you. Uh, I'm going to work on that one. Um, and then I'm going to show get one together for you, Brandon, about um, multiple lenses with images on the other sides. Uh, and then the next question that needs to happen is... Um, is anybody terribly ab averse to using Zoom? Um, or should I stay with the uh, YouTube streaming? Uh, let me know in the comments and uh, or on the chat, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, what I got today news-wise is uh, AP and IB testing are still moving forward. Um, I'm going to try to get into school probably tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get a whiteboard um, and my whiteboard markers and check to see if uh, the apples that I left in the fridge are still good. Uh, and what else? What was the other interesting thing that is happening? Um, uh, oh, actually, the YouTube uh, Zoom, I get, a, I get an MP4, so I think I would then put it up on... Um, Oh, Angeline's question. We can use Zoom, but I heard it's glitching. Yeah, probably. All right. Well, then, okay, then we'll just stay with this. Um, that's a good point. Uh, yeah. And then, so it looks, sounds like that's happening. Um, 
I know that you guys are worried about that. I know that the physics bowl uh, was canceled. Sorry, Felix. Um, and then uh, F equals MA has been seriously delayed. It's a lot of things happening um, right now. So what we will do is just kind of move forward. Um, keep an eye on school loop. Uh, I think this was good. I think uh, half an hour is not long enough. Um, I think doing this at a standard time is a good idea. Um, RJ, I see your question about next week's YouTube live also at this time. Um, I think so. I think I might be willing to do another one in there as well. Uh, just so you know, this helps me uh, also with you. Um, and uh, yeah. So keep an eye on School Loop. Um, if you don't hear anything at all, then we'll do same time next week. Um, and continue to send those questions in through uh, WebAssign, and I will have those up and running. Anything else you need to know? Uh, that's about all I can think of. Thank you for hopping in and uh, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. I'm sure I touched my face like 10 times in this video. So, all right. Uh, I'll make sure you do something cool. Uh, you have this time. Like I said, I've been making sauerkraut. I'll be making bread next week too. Uh, also roasting coffee either next week or the week after that, just to kind of keep things going. Try new things. Don't just sit down and study. Uh, the grades will take care of themselves. We'll figure it out. And now everybody's grade is going to have a giant asterisk next to it. So it's no big deal. And uh, I do miss you guys a little bit. So, all right. Talk to you later. Bye.